High above Manchester, nestled amongst the trees at the edge of this cricket ground, is a tree that stands out. It never grows, it never sheds its leaves, and it can't die, because it's not really a tree. Now, we've covered these disguised transmitter sites before, and they're nothing secret. They were put up in a time when mobile phone transmitters and the masts that supported them were a bit taboo. There were those concerned about them spoiling the rural landscape, and those fearing that this new digital mobile phone infrastructure caused cancer. 20 years ago, a group of protesters even pulled down a T-Mobile mast with a Land Rover after undoing the bolts that held it down. When the police turned up, there was actually a firearms incident due to a protester with a shotgun. During the growth of the Orange mobile phone network, it began targeting populated areas rather than roads, so their aggressive growth strategy meant that new masts were closer to homes and buildings. This is where the disguised masts such as trees came about. There's actually numerous different tree designs, and there was even this one made to look like a dead tree. It sits high above Exton in Hampshire, and its small footprint and lack of height requirement made it an ideal trial for this type of mast. Even a seasoned antenna spotter or geek like me or you would struggle to spot it. Nowadays, as I said in my other video on this topic, it's probably safe to say that there's more of these disappearing than being put up. Mobile phone architecture is common in today's urban, suburban and even rural landscape. Of course, there are other ways to disguise mobile phone sites. If we look at this picture I took in London last year of an undisclosed premises, we can see quite a lot. Not only did I inadvertently catch a glimpse of this wooden walkway around the roof of the Romanian embassy, which is actually used for tending to their antenna systems, but also an array of panel antennas wrapped in a brick covering to disguise them. These are in a really terrible location, surrounded by buildings on all sides. I'm sure they're mobile phone related, but in this part of London you can never be sure. Anyway, this tree mast sits in the town of Hyde, and most people probably don't notice that it's a fake tree, and the ones that do probably don't care. What we're interested in though is what's inside. There's a compound surrounding it which houses all the transmitter cabinets and supporting equipment, and there's even a GPS antenna for timing. But is there anything inside the trunk? If we cut it down, I strongly doubt we'd be able to count the rings. The branches slide into these tubes welded to the side of the tower and bolt into place. The tree is assembled in sections, but I wanted to show you what's inside. As you can see, it's completely hollow inside and has a ladder going up to the top, as well as coax feeders from the transmitters to the antennas, and what could possibly be some sort of winch. I'm guessing that there's panels located where the antennas are, which unbolt and can be removed, so engineers can work on them from inside the tree. It's probably much easier than trying to get to the equipment the mast is supporting from the outside due to all of the branches. These photos aren't actually from the mast at Hyde, they're from one that's been decommissioned and were sent to me earlier this year. Now, there are many more ingenious ways of disguising antennas such as this, so maybe we'll cover some in another instalment.